big game. Uh, and the last game of the day, Arsenal against Liverpool 2-2. It finished. Arsenal will be kicking themselves just a little bit. Uh, Richard Butler over on Arsenal Podcast is with me. Hi, Richard. How are you doing? Good evening. Yeah, good evening to you as well. And Leroy Phillips, Anfield South Podcasters, uh, up as well. Hi, Leroy. No, how are you doing? You all right, guys? Yeah, I'm good. Uh, do, will Arsenal be sitting in that dressing room afterwards there, do you think, Richard, thinking we could, we, we should have won that? Yes and no. I mean, obviously, we, we led twice. And when you lead twice at home, you kind of think you should win. But let's be honest, in the second half, we got far too defensive. We didn't do enough to win that game. And I think probably a draw was the right result, a fair result overall. In fact, Liverpool probably um, shaded that second half by enough to, to get the draw. But, yeah, it's frustrating for me because, you know, when you're in front at home and you, you want to be serious about, you know, winning big trophies... You've got to be more ambitious than what we were in that second half, you know. Especially when we've got, we had a lot of problems in defence. We had Saliba missing at the start. We lost Gabriel. We lost Timber. And to rely on the defensive side of our game against a team like Liverpool was always going to be risky anyway. Our, our strength is to keep the ball, keep possession, and take the game forward. And we just didn't do that at all in that second half. And you know, we we were we did the same at Man City when we had ten players and it didn't work. We conceded a late equaliser. We've done it again today with 11 players and it hasn't worked again. Conceded a late equaliser. It's like, you know, if we want to beat these teams, if we want to beat Liverpool in the league, if we want to beat Man City to the title, we have to be more, we have to show more ambition when we're winning games. It's no good sitting back and sit, um, shutting up shop, parking the bus, if you like. You know, we, we're starting to do that too many times now. It's almost like we're missing Martin Odegaard. Do we have a, another way of attacking without him? And I get the feeling we haven't figured that out yet. You know, we've missed Bukayo Saka. You could see what a difference he made today back in the team. Wasn't even probably fit 100%. Scored a fantastic goal. Was a threat until he ran out of legs in the second half. But I just don't think... If you want to win the league and be serious, you've got to... At 2-1 up, you've got to manage that second half much better and don't just sit back and sit back and just almost... We were waiting for Liverpool to score. Yeah. It was just, when are they going to score? Because we just didn't look like we managed that game at all well and we've done it too many times now this season it's starting to be is the pressure getting to Mikel Arteta from two seasons well, of going close I'm not sure we, we don't seem to have the confidence to take the game forward you know we were we were as good as Liverpool in the first half we were probably slightly better team we were leading why not take that into the second half instead of just sitting back and inviting pressure against a team that is you know what they were uh, going into this weekend top of the league why not take the game to them, keep the ball and say, come and get it off us, come and try and beat us. And we didn't, we just let them have it. And in the end, we've paid the price, they've got the goal. And those two points would have been massive for us, it would have passed right back in there. And yeah. now there's a four point gap to Liverpool, uh, to Liverpool uh, a three, uh, uh, four point gap to Liverpool and a uh, yeah. six point gap to Man City. It's too much. Well, you, you know, I mean, uh, we'll let you get it off your chest there, we did, uh, Richard, <laughs> and uh, I'm not surprised as well. Leroy, I mean, uh, Liverpool will be a little disappointed as well. You had your opportunities there. I mean, it was one of those games for me that uh, I enjoyed it. Decent game, but I wasn't uh, obviously involved in either side there. And um, a, a good test, a test, though, that Liverpool will think on the way home that they could also have got all three. Yeah, I think it's an opportunity missed. But I always said, like, obviously, the all this week, the talk's been the Saka going to play. Be honest, I always felt Saka was going to play. Um, to be fair, it's something that I think Arteta has done a bit differently. Normally, they would they would have thrown him back into that game before, which was against Sack Shakhtar. Um, he didn't. Um, and then obviously, Timber's done a good job tonight, I felt. Partey, a big shout-out to him. He's done really well against Diaz. I was disappointed with Diaz. Didn't. I would have wanted him to have gone at a guy that's like a midfielder playing mm. that <laughs> left back. Like, you know, it's you're not getting no change out of him and it, it just wasn't good enough in my opinion. But um, obviously where Gabriel and those guys have um, come out, I think that was where Arsenal then lost a lot, a lot of belief there um, and that kind of opened up the doors. But I'm glad to get a, a point out of this game. Beginning of today, I said I'd be happy to walk away with a point away at, at the Emirates at this stage in the season. I'll take that lovely. It's already uh, looking a little bit for some like, oh, we've got to catch Manchester City, they're going to be the side. Liverpool, I, I think, will be, you'll be happy, won't you, where, as you say, you are at the moment. I mean, there is an awful long way to go. We sort of get 
carried away with these early big games, don't we? When there's still plenty of time to do it and get it right. Yeah, well, I think it's crazy. I mean, at the end of the day, we, we're not even hit double figures yet in the games. And um, we're already talking about, oh, my God, this is a massive game. I think for either side, even if we had lost tonight, um, I still think there's so much more to play, um, so much more to go in the season. So many The teams in the league now have improved so much that there's no easy game now. There's no mm -hmm. game where you look at it and go, oh, yeah, that should be a, a banker. Don't get me wrong. There are sides that you expect your side to beat. But if on the day, if your boys don't turn up, then you're gonna you're not gonna get the three points. So, mm. yeah, well, I think hopefully, um, as I say, I wanted us to just be in touch and distance, which we are. Um, we've got City um, in a couple of weeks, and hopefully we can get the result there as well. Mm. One of the big nonsenses that we've still got involved, of course, with is uh, an international third break coming up. I mean, this is just quite ridiculous, isn't it? Very, very annoying. Um, I don't know. I'll take this one quickly. I mean. It just breaks it up, you know. Especially when you, I, I, I welcome them with el, well, um, open arms. When um, when your side's not doing so well, you, you, you're like, yeah, I'll take that all day long. You, you, you know, you want that little break. But um, when your team's got good momentum and stuff, it's just nothing else more annoying than going into that. And knowing our luck, we'll come back from that and we'll have a twelve thirty kickoff as well, Mark. God. Yeah. <laughs> You'll have a twelve thirty kickoff. One or two, not sure whether they're completely fit after coming back. Well, this is Richard for me. I mean, we're going to be talking later on in the second hour about this, but I want to ask both of you know about the way that football is shifting and going and what we're hearing. Uh, we've really got to keep our own football together here, or else I can see it being stolen by the Middle East and by America. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've got the, the bigger Champions League this season as well. So you've got more games in that to start with. Yeah. You've got more international breaks. And it seems as though the focus is suddenly moving away from the domestic leagues. And, I mean, the, the European Super League was obviously mentioned a few years ago, got sort of shouted down. But it's almost happening in front of our face. And no one's no. protesting. No one's saying anything about it now. And what no. we've got now is... What's there? Thirty-five teams in that in that Champions League. That's that's a that's a that's a Super League. That is that mm. is a Super League competition. Yeah. And they've just called it the Champions League to try and oh we'll push it in. No one will notice. Mm. We'll call it the Champions League. Everyone will think it's the Champions League. I'm sorry, it's not. There's thirty-five teams in that. That's a that's a Super League. That's a European Super League. They brought it in without um, anybody um, putting up any any protest against it. And now, like you said, we've got these international breaks coming right, left, and centre. Which you know, international football is important because as a, as a young player everybody wants to represent their country it's the pinnacle yeah. of anyone's career right and i wouldn't want to take that away from anybody but when you're playing pointless friendlies yeah. just to um to have a break for no reason that's what we need to look at well, competitive we... game brilliant yeah. not nothing else no, no. look i couldn't agree with with more with you more there richard and leroy one of the other things that i don't like about any of this of course we know that this premier league has been built and is extraordinary and followed around the world. But we don't need Gianni Infantino and others to suddenly think that it's their league because it's not. We hold on to it. Make sure the Labour Party get a proper football regulator on the business right from the very start. We're talking about that a little later on tonight. You know, they'll all go to the States for the Club World Cup. There'll be players who can hardly move by the time they come back for that for next season. And on and on it goes. And it's our league and we should be saying hands off. The Football Association be saying that. The Premier League should be saying that. The fans are saying it already. And if, you know what, when it comes to the World Cup or the Europeans with England, I cannot believe that we're not good enough just to have three friendlies in the build-up to the tournament. Thank you very much. We muck about with 20, 25 players, bit doing this, bit doing that against sides that are meaningless. We don't need any of this anymore, do we? Uh, I, share, I share your passion on this one, Mark. Honestly, it's so, so, so frustrating, you know? It's, it, honestly, I mean, it's just, as I say, players getting injured left, right and centre. Yeah. And also, the, the quality of the football that you're going to get in the Premier League is going to suffer, yeah. inevitably. So... Well, well, we, we just, I, hope, I hope that wasn't the FA uh, or the Premier League pulling <laughs> the plug there on Leroy at that point. Richard, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, t t to be honest with you, I mean, it's 
is this are we still are we still here you're still, still there. i can hear you i can hear oh, you, you can, somewhere in the ether don't worry I'm, I'm, I, no I, I just think the football now but you know you're saying the fa and the premier league should should want to keep our league they should but they all they care about is the money they get offered to for broadcasting rights and to have games all over the world that's all they're worried about they don't care about football in this country really they don't care about grassroots football they don't care about anything else other than how much money they can make from it all and you can clearly see that's this has been the direction of it for a long, long time. And all this is now reaching ahead, isn't it? And yeah. I think what's going to happen is, hopefully what's going to happen is, the fans, who are the most important people, are going to vote with their feet and say, we are not going to have this and stop the... Te- if, they, if they're going to start pulling Premier League games over in and, America or and, Saudi Arabia or wherever it is, our fans yeah. have got to say, we're not going to have it. Yeah, we're not no, going to go. Yeah, we're not. And just a final word on this, very quickly, is that I would say is let's get this Manchester City stuff sorted out. Let's get these other problems sorted out. Let's perhaps relegate a Manchester City down to the Championship. That'll stop them taking our teams from the Premier League without a Manchester City, wouldn't it? Send them to America. Send them to play in America. That's, that should be their punishment. Send them over there so they get out of there. That's it. Don't relegate them. Just get rid of them completely. <laughs> Send them over there. That'll do. <laughs> Final word from you as well, Leroy. Oh, yeah, no, I mean, again, I'm with you guys on there. I don't know what happened. Um, but, yeah, I, I just think, to be honest, you're being light. I'll, City City can't really go down to the championship. Why would they want them in the championship? It messes them up. Yeah. Just bomb them out, if you ask me. So, yeah. yeah, no, well, there we are. Yeah. I was just trying to be a little bit, you know. Yeah, you're being nice. There we go. Nice. Well, you're always great, boys. Thank you very much indeed for your work tonight. As always, Leroy Phillips, Richard Butler, over in Arsenal and Anfield South. Two brilliant podcasts. Uh, we're talking Chelsea against Newcastle United.